Get fired up on the WFO line. WFO, Joe. 954-889-6796. It's just been an absolute joy to be a drag racing fan. Go wide open, and your call may be used on the show. Or preface by saying I'm not a Kurt Busch fan or apologist. I don't know where Greg Anderson's ego is gone, but... I know one person that's going to be a big-time villain in pro stock. That's 954-889-6796. That phone line is always WFO. All right. Joining us now, he is your friendly NHRA Southeastern Division Director, D2, baby, Rich Schaefer, joining us back here on WFO. You're friendly, right? Well, it depends on who you ask. I'd say there's a few racers that will disagree with that, and my wife. (laughs) <laughs> but other than that, other than that, friendly guy. Now, the Baby Gators slash Amelie mm-hmm. Motor Oil NHRA Gator Nationals. This was news that broke last week uh, and uh, a couple weeks back. And I've seen a lot of feedback that is all over the place. Some is pro, some is con. Wow, the racers, they get a great opportunity to go out there and win the Gator Nationals. Oh, the fans are going to have to show up early. I don't know. What's the story? So I wanted to invite you on so we can kind of discuss all the angles and hash all of this out because this is uh this was done for a reason so let's explain first of all what's going on with class eliminations knowing that many of our listeners are maybe have never even seen class eliminations they're nitro fans so what's going on rich well you know class eliminations is part of the the heritage of nhra you know when you have two camaros you know same weight same horsepower going down the track it's heads up who gets there first gets the, gets the trophy that's the way drag racing was meant to be and uh class is actually one of the funnest parts of uh of my job at a national event is getting well except for doing the ladders but actually watching the cars go down the track that's one of the most exciting parts of the weekend for me and uh you know with the gators it's the Gators have gotten so big, and with this being the 50th, there's going to be a lot of marketing activity that needs to be done. we got this Legends race going on with all these icons coming into race. We didn't want to see – we didn't want to see because of the schedule constraints it get pushed off to the side with class because it's such an important deal. We want to make sure we do it right and can devote some time to it because it's a big part of it for these stock superstars that come down. And when you look at the when you look at the geography of the facility, look, the haulers have gotten bigger. We don't have as much room as we used to have to put all these cars in here. So that's part of the reason the quotas are, are tighter than they used to be. Is there's just physically not room to put everybody in. And we know with it being the 50th that more people should have the chance to run for that 50th anniversary Gator Nationals class eliminations Wally. And we kind of thought that the Baby Gators and the Gator Nationals have kind of become one big event. It's almost like a mini U.S. Nationals. So – we thought it was the best thing for the stock super stock guys to give everybody a chance to come and run for it. That if we moved it to the baby Gators anyway, since the majority of the guys that run in the Gator Nationals are there the week early anyways. So we can try to put it on the schedule where we do it appropriately. We don't have to move it around for a television schedule or any other activities are going on. We want to put emphasis back on class eliminations. And just doing it seven days earlier was the best way we could figure out to open up the doors to let more people be a part of it. Wow. All right. So let, that's the plan. Let, let, me, let me pause you right there to bring, uh, bring everybody along because I would, uh, I would hope that many of our Lucas Oil Series racers are listening to this to kind of dispatch with any of the doubt that they may have or maybe confusion or misinformation as to uh, what's going on. But you had to balance now. Uh, two different groups here because there are race fans that come in on Thursday for the hardcore Thursday. And, and uh, we've been there together the past several years and I'll call it, I'm going to pick a number, you know, I'm going to call it 2000 people, right? You know, the diehards, the ones that get there, they they're there to see class eliminations, man. And so maybe they're going to have to extend or do another trip or come early. Maybe they're from the region. If you're certainly coming from Miami like I am, it might be very challenging. But they might have a bit of a problem with it. But on the other side of the coin, there is the fact that you said everybody gets a chance to run for the trophy. Let's explain that because there is something called grading points. Not everybody just gets into the 50th Gator Nationals. There is a process that has to be followed, and frankly— from what I understand, all of the spots were taken up by drivers who have the maximum number of grading points slash, you know, we'll call them experience points, meaning you could have a really fast car. If you didn't go to a bunch of events, you couldn't run for that trophy. Explain that. 
Right. Well, it's you know, in order to qualify for a national event, you have to actually be a part of the Lucas Oil Regional Divisional Programs. You know, tracks like Orlando Speed World, which is coming up uh, next week, you know, or Valdosta or the Baby Gators or, you know, Rockingham or Galat. You have to run in those divisional programs to earn your way, to earn the opportunity to, to register for a national event. It's a way of making sure that the guys that are out there supporting Lucas Oil and that series have first dibs on getting on a national event. And, yeah, with it being the 50th, um, it filled up really quick. I think uh, stock and super stock, if you didn't have five grading points, I think, uh, you didn't get in right now. But granted, there's always people that drop out and other people that drop in. A lot can happen between now and the Gator Nationals. So even up until the Monday of, you'll see that lineup of, of drivers rotating a little bit, some new guys coming in that weren't previously registered. So you know, it's not like the field's set, but for the most part, it is for stock and super stock. And you know, it, it just it didn't feel right. Uh, you know, we know we have to have quotas on it. There is a time schedule. There's a parking schedule. There are certain restrictions on any type of event of how much you can actually fit in the bag, and the bag's full. So we just it just seemed better if we could actually let more people be a part of class eliminations by moving a week early. By moving it a week early, it is technically being run with the division race, with the Lucas Oil Drive Racing Series at the Baby Gators. Therefore, there's no quota. So you can come down and run the division race for the Lucas Oil Division Series points. You can also run class eliminations that's part of the Gator Nationals. And then even if you're not in the Gator Nationals, you can go home. you still got to be a part of this big, basically two-week celebration that's becoming the Gator Nationals. It's not just a four-day event anymore. It's two weeks long. Wow. So that's, that's the goal is to get more people – uh, from stock and super stock there. Wow. Okay. Now, and and to me, that makes sense, and I appreciate it. Uh, there's another angle to it, and you know, people are well, why? Why don't they just allow more cars? Uh, it, NHRA. I don't know if it's a policy or it's just something that happens. But at these big milestone events, you guys bring in NHRA brings in. Um, you know, all categories. Is that the way to say it? For instance, you know, for I've been personally advocating, you know, Super Street at the Gator Nationals for the past couple of years because I happen to have a car that could potentially be Super Street. It's totally self-serving, but I love that. I love that category because they're big, real cars. Well, this year they'll be there, and it's something that seems to happen on these milestone events. Yeah, it was uh, up until this year, I believe that Super Street was the only category that's not already in the Gator Nationals. Yes. Uh, so we typically, you know, we run it once per division, and we run it uh, – in the past, we've ran it at the Southern Nationals up at Atlanta later on in the year. And, you know, Joe, we listened to your request, and we just thought it made sense to put Super Street in the Gator Nationals. So we moved it from the Southerns down to the Amelie Oil Gator Nationals this year. So, I mean, that, that was a factor in it. That's more cars that are going to get parked – and and ran during that event so yeah i mean you're adding uh 40 cars to the equation that weren't there last year so unfortunately i'm sure that doesn't make a few guys happy in the other classes but we had to adjust for quotas to accommodate for those 40 more parking spots um and that meant that some of the other categories went down by five apiece there you go so So i'm a hero to super street and everyone else wants to kill me yeah, yeah, it's all Joe's fault. <laughs> so for, for once, I could point the finger at you. It's not my fault. There you go. That's even fine. Even though I'm actually the guy that's at fault. <laughs> now, listen, I, 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 you know, I always advocate for Super Street just because I love the cars. They're big cars. They're real cars. And it is, a, you know, I'll call it a moderate investment to get involved in that style of racing. And I really think that's what sets the hook. But uh, but I, I like it, and I'm excited to see those cars at the Gator Nationals. But what about, okay, the fan now? We've already established that this is being done so that stock and super stock racers who believe that they have got the quickest C-stock automatic in the country, whatever it happens to be, can come to the Gator Nationals and try to win class, albeit a couple of days early. So maybe explain explain the schedule when those cars are going to run, and let's talk to some race fans that are in the region. If it's within an hour or two, I am driving there to go experience this mm-hmm. because you are seeing the best of the best, period, bar none. And is this, uh, you know, what happens with ticketing? You know, can they get in with their Gator Nationals ticket? How does that work? Explain. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we're, we're going to let people in. If, you, if you've got a Gator Nationals ticket, we'll let you in as a spectator to watch for Baby Gators because we don't want to take away that chance. And, and we know that there's some people that are going to be upset from the fan, fan base that they won't be there for class eliminations. We get that. It was a, it was a worst-case scenario. You know, who we felt like it was more important to try to get this done for the racers, even if that upset a few of our fans that don't get to see class eliminations. And that's just, you know, unfortunately, we couldn't. We couldn't figure out a perfect solution that was good for both sides. And in this case, we wanted to put the racers' priority above the spectators and that. As bad as that sounds, I just don't have a better way of saying it. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if you if you come up to the Baby Gators, you show us your Gator Nationals ticket, we're going to let you in. We want you to see it. You know, it, it's, it, like I said, it's becoming a two-week event. It's not really just a one-week deal anymore. This is a, this is a U.S. Nationals of the first half of the year of the East Coast, and it's, you know, It's for baby U.S. nationals, not just the baby gators. So, you know, because of that, we really don't know. It's a guessing game on how many stock super stockers are going to show up for this and take this chance to come here and get that 50th anniversary class eliminations wally. It could be a lot bigger than we expect. So we've got a plan for a a large field of stock super stock just in case. So what we're going to do is we're going to move test and tune to Wednesday instead of the normal scenario of Thursday. Test and tune is Wednesday afternoon, 12 to 6, uh, for all of our sportsman categories, including alcohol. Thursday, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out the final details of it, but we'll probably do a little deal Thursday morning from like you know 9 to noon where you can a guy can come in and buy one test and tune hit. If he didn't get there on Wednesday, we can open up that window to let a guy get down the track one time at least on Thursday. Because be, with the class eliminations in the schedule, on Thursday afternoon at 12 o'clock, the baby gators begins and we will do on thursday afternoon we'll do two rounds of stock qualifying two rounds of super stock qualifying and all of the dot 90 classes will get one time trial and that will actually take up the whole day the whole afternoon you know we we look at the factors of the sunset the average temperature things like that we want to try to be done by around seven o'clock that night and uh that way wipes out your whole thursday so then you roll into friday and uh, Friday, we start class eliminations that morning. So Friday is essentially class day at the Baby Gators. Along with that, um, Friday the all the 8th. other categories. I'm sorry? The 8th. Of, I just want to put a date on this so people who are maybe making plans can just, like, program it into their calendar. So we started this conversation. We were talking about March 6th. And then uh, the 7th mm-hmm. was the Thursday. And the 8th, March 8th, is class day. So continue on. That's right. Yeah, Friday, March 8th, we start class eliminations. So, uh, you know, we'll hope to go hot at 8 o'clock that morning. That always depends on the weather. And, uh, but that's the goal. 8 a.m. we'll start. We'll get uh, the dot 90 classes. We'll get another time trial on Friday. So that'll be their second one of the week. Uh, stock and super stock run their complete class eliminations. There'll be three sessions. This is more than normal. We'll do three sessions of top alcohol qualifying on Friday. Normally we do two, but we decided this year, especially with the test and tune moving a day earlier, that might be tougher for some of the top alcohol teams to get there for test and tune. So we will do three qualifiers on Friday for top alcohol dragster and top alcohol funny car. Uh, you also got uh, top sportsman, top dragster, and comp. That's Hickory and Close, top dragster, Stotts Ford, top sportsman, and comp. They will have uh, two of their qualifying sessions on Friday also. So by the end of the day on Friday, Class eliminations is complete. Top alcohol qualifying is complete. And all the other sportsman categories have had two hits already. So now you're rolling into Saturday morning, March 9th. Now we're getting our juniors are starting to arrive. So we'll start junior time trial Saturday morning. And we'll get that third qualifying session or time trial for the categories that haven't had it on Saturday morning. So that's the goal is that when we start quiet, or excuse me, when we start regular eliminations, Every class will have three runs down that track in time trials or qualifying. Because on Saturday afternoon, hopefully, well, actually by 11, we're hoping we can start eliminations of top alcohol. And then after that, we'll go into the Hickory and Close and Stotts Ford and Comp. So Saturday, by the end of the day, we have hopefully completed all eliminations for top alcohol. And we've ran one round of eliminations for all the other remaining categories. And that gets us down to where it's a nice, manageable day on Sunday where we complete our eliminations. And, you know, we hope Sunday we're done by about 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon and we're in the winter circle giving out Wally trophies. Wow. Tremendous. Tremendous. And then, uh, you know, yeah. Our... yeah. go ahead. 
it's it's really a, if you look at the show the show schedule, which we'll I'm trying to get it posted. Just you know, we keep getting backlog with little cost. It just seems like we never have enough time. But we're trying to get the schedule posted on the Division Two website and Facebook here in the next day or two for the first three events. But if you look at that Baby Gator schedule, every day it's really jam packed from a fan standpoint. It's really a quality event to come to. Oh my goodness! Are you kidding me? Absolutely. Uh, well, the the class day is is uh, pretty spectacular. I'm going to hit you with another question in a second. But then, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, people might be wondering, well, what happens? Like the rigs are going to are going to be there, and the racers will. Or it's up to them. And then all of a sudden, Thursday, the 14th, the Amelie Motor Oil NHRA Gator Nationals that we have, you know, have expanded beyond now begins with Hardcore Thursday. Correct. Correct. Yeah, we go into the traditional uh, Gator National schedule, and and honestly, I haven't looked at it in detail yet to see what they're, you know, how we've adjusted the schedule because of the fact that we don't have class eliminations on Thursday, Friday at the Gator Nationals. But trust me, it's still jam packed full of of activity on those days. Um, you know, and, and we try to buy ourselves a little cushion when you can. Yeah, it's March. It's it, it's yeah, it's Florida, but it's still March. So we will try to buy ourselves a little bit of cushion. So we've got some leeway in there because the day always gets a little bit longer than what we have scheduled than our perfect world schedules. We know that. So, it, you know, it's most of the guys uh, stay here between the events, the sportsman racers. They go out and enjoy some insights. They can go down to Ocala, go to Godless Museum. Uh, there's a, a big car show going on over in Jacksonville, not far from the track that week. There's a, a great nature preserve three miles up the street from the track. That's pretty fascinating. If you haven't been there, it's like a little mini zoo out in the middle of the country out here, just North of the racetrack. So there's plenty of things for people to do around here that are staying that week or those few days in between the babies and the majors. And, uh, you know, for, for those that need to get home to the real job for a few days so they can come back. That's the idea of the baby gator schedules that we, we focus very much on trying to get our racers home at a decent time on Sunday so the boss isn't mad at them on Monday morning for being there late and being tired. There you go. And that's something that, uh, you know, let's, I, I don't know, uh, you know, like five years uh, ago, um, the folks at NHRA like really prioritized those kind of things. He's running some double events, depending on where you are, you know, piggybacking to national events. So the racers only have to drive to a region, uh, you know, one time. Uh, maybe, I don't, I don't want to say unappreciated or lost in the conversation, but this happened uh, a couple of years back on purpose to make things easier for racers. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the, the travel cost and the, the travel time is a big part of the, uh, the hurdle that a lot of our sportsman racers face. We get that. It's not their professional full-time job. You know, there's a handful of great ones out there like Rampy, but that this is their full-time gig. But, and he's done a fantastic job of it. He's one of ours. We're pretty proud of it. But for the majority of our guys, we know they've got to get home. We know the expenses are high for travel. Thankfully, fuel isn't quite what it was a few years ago. But that kind of made you know, changing the formats around a little bit. Well, some of our division races we do as a two-day format instead of a three-day format. Uh, we put some doubles in some areas where it just made sense to do it. We try not to oversaturate you know, the, the schedule with doubles because uh, you know, there's only so many events that we want to do. And we want to make sure that we actually spread them out to all those great member tracks we have around the country. So, yeah, in fact, in, in our case, in Division Two, we don't have any doubles of this year, uh, except for at the end of the year when we go to Rockingham, where we finish our season with the National Open, uh, the Lucas Oil Series, and on top of that, you have the Moser Sportsman Shootout together. So that's the only one we have in our division this year that's kind of like a jam-packed multiple event weekend all in one ticket. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, we've got a lot of positive feedback from our, our racers down here on the two-day format. It's made it a little bit tougher for some of the guys when we're going, going into round one on Saturday morning, and they were used to the old days where they come in Saturday morning and get a last qualifier. We get that. We know it's not perfect, but for the majority of our racers, it just seemed like that was a better way to serve their needs to get them home to their regular job in their life. Got it. No, listen, I, I have heard positive feedback about it, and – uh, I feel like it's an ever evolving thing. If, if things, uh, you know, change, uh, you know, and, and you get some better feedback, a better way to do it, I think you'll do it. All right, here's here's one for you. I have not prepared you for this question, and maybe you have an answer, maybe you don't. Whatever that is, it's okay with me. But we're talking about Friday, March eighth, class day from the Baby Gators, as in class eliminations for the fiftieth Amelie Motor Oil NHRA Gator Nationals. Mm-hmm. 
for the uh, one moment, please. For the race fan who is in uh, Arizona, California, Oklahoma, Seattle, Washington, mm-hmm. who wants to sidle up to his computer and watch this happen, will there be any way to see class eliminations? You know, there's a, you know many streaming products over the years at certain events. Sometimes, depending on various factors that I you know sometimes understand and sometimes don't, is that something that may or may not happen? Well, I almost saw the game show announcement, and I'm like, "Well, yes, Joe, well, there is." Uh, <laughs> we actually, <laughs> well, Thanks wait, wait a second, our... Rich. I want everybody to know that. Listen, Rich came on last second, agreed to come on WFO Radio to explain this because you know a lot of people want to know, and I don't give him the questions I'm going to ask. We're having a conversation, so I just I just nailed him with something that the answer might them could have been no, Joe. There's not, and so I, I wanted to preface it that way. Go ahead. Yeah, we uh, thanks to uh, Mike and Emily Volkman, two of our great sportsman racers down here. They they stepped up. They talked to Warren Evans about what he's been doing with Division Three, with the sportsman television coverage he's doing for a lot of these NHRA events. And thanks to Service Department Solutions, uh, we will have uh, live streaming of the. Uh, let's see. Here. Currently, we're going to do the Valdosta event, which is our second event of the year down here. We will do the Baby Gators, and then a little bit later, we'll do Atlanta at the Lucas Oil Race up there. So the f- three of the first four uh, division races in Division Two will be live streamed. There was a scheduling conflict. We couldn't make Orlando work. But f- for sure on the Baby Gators, Warren and his crew will be there. Uh, in fact, I was just told the other day that the uh, the guest director of the television program, hoping behind the scenes, will be none other than legendary Jay Hollinger. What? on the property to help with the uh, the live streaming. Yeah, it's going to be a big party. Jay's coming down. Love Jay. One of my faves. Yeah. One of my faves. WFO listener yeah. back to the satellite days, Jay Hollinger. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's the legend. He is. Okay, he so... Was, uh, go ahead. For better or worse, one of my mentors. Well, for better and for worse. We all know Jay, but uh, I, I'd choose him if I could. Um, so there will be a live stream of class eliminations from the Amelie Motor Oil and HRA Gator Nationals, which to me, that is uh, huge, the right decision, mandatory, great stuff. So anybody that is like concerned, well, I'm flying into the Gator Nationals on Hardcore Thursday to see class eliminations. Now I'm not going to be able to see it. The answer is no, you will be able to see it. You'll have to watch the live stream on the mobile device, but it's not like you're going to miss it, which to me, that has the potential to set records for uh, Warren's live stream. Yeah, well, it's yeah. You know, last year was the first year we did a live stream for one of the Division Two events, and uh, Warren City had record numbers for the Baby Gators last year. So I would expect with class, it's gonna it's gonna be even bigger. Uh, it's it's gonna be a big weekend. It's really gonna be a lot of fun. We're actually hot and heavy working on stuff already. It feels like it's feels like it's right around the corner. And uh, you know, we you've you've heard that we've poured a new surface. We're working on that right now. Yes, uh, concrete's poured. Got some polishing to do, got some grinding to do, put some rubber down on it, and it'll be ready. Uh, we had uh, Ned Walliser on the show a week ago, and we're you know really beating the drum on this story. 50 straight, or 50 Gator Nationals, 40 straight for me. I'm super excited. Ned got me fired up about the surface. Um, you've been out there, or maybe you haven't, but like you know, what do you know? Is it super smooth? Are we going to have something that can bring this track back to its record-setting heritage? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, they did a quality job on it. I was really uh, really impressed with the, the work that the concrete company did on it. You know, we have, it seemed like everybody and their brother that's worked with us in the past has been involved in this project. Ned was there, Wayne McMurtry was there, you know, Mike Yurk is the guy here at the track that leads up the, the charge. And they had some quality people involved. Uh, and they actually, some of the contractors we work with actually traveled to quite a few of the national events last year and looked at what we were doing right and what we were doing wrong and looked at some of the new surfaces out there. So what they've done here is going to be really fast. Uh, we've got, obviously, like any any time we pour concrete, there's still some work to do. You know, we, we still got some grinding and some polishing coming up this week and next week on it to get it to where we want it. But by far, a uh, completely different world from where we were a year ago with this track. And great track, but it had some age. It was a little haggard and it needed some love and and thankfully, um, you know, the mothership stepped up and let us spend the money to do it, do it right. 
Super exciting. Rich, I, I want to thank you for uh, you know coming on, laying it all out. If you're a sportsman racer out there, and I didn't ask the question that's burning up your brain, I apologize. But uh, I feel like we did spin the hits and uh, cover all the vital information for fans out there. To recap, if you got a ticket for the Gator Nationals, you want to see this, they're letting you in. There will be a live stream. And uh, to me, that covers everything that fans are concerned about. Now, here's one for you. i got two more for you. Ready? Okay, one, let me, let me sure. get you with David Rampey, obviously. He's a division. Division two guy, Southeastern Division. To me, one of the greats of all time, not just uh, in numbers, but in character. And he got to 100 wins. And I just wanted to give you the opportunity. You referenced various racers uh, a couple of times. And, you know, Rampy keeps coming up because of his greatness. He probably would hate to hear us talk about him like that because that's not his thing. But it is what it is. David Rampy, how great is this guy? Yeah, you know, and it's, it's not... Not to take anything away from Dave, he is he is the goat of comp, and it, the part of that is the people he actually runs against week in and week out, uh, all over the country, and especially including Division Two. I remember an old polar friend of mine in truck and tractor pulling, Ken Lamont, was doing an interview once, and we're in Phoenix, Arizona, and he told people, says, you know, I, yeah, I'm at the top of my game right now, and the reason I'm at the top of my game is because I run with the best people every single week out here on this tour, and Rampy's kind of one of those guys. He was great without any help. But when he's going up against guys like Kimbrough and Puckett and Treadwell, all these people from division two kind of push him to the front. Well, they push him to be as good as he is, you know, and he surrounds himself with good people like Barry, you know, so it, it's kind of nice for me that, you know, you don't want to show favoritism towards anybody in my position. Uh, but when, when guys like Rampy succeed, I feel like it's a win for the whole division and everybody down here. You know, he's one of our guys. It, we, this division, I'm sure every division is like this. You cheer for your own. And, you know, we cheer for the Lampies. We cheer for the Millicans. We cheer for the Blake Alexanders and the Lions and all these people that are from Division Two. When they win, it feels like everybody down here won. So it was a big moment for everybody. And you could see it this year at our banquet that just happened a couple of weeks ago when Barry or excuse me, when. Lampy came up on stage and the room gave him a standing ovation. It wasn't prompt. You know, it wasn't prompted by anything we said or did. It was just prompted by the crowd themselves. And that's the kind of love these guys have for him down here. I mean, he's, we're, we're proud of the guy. It's great to see him get to that benchmark. My only concern is that now he starts to back off. Yeah. I want him to keep pushing. He's yeah. got to keep passing a few more of those guys on that all time win list before he's done. I don't want him to ever be done. Sorry, David. You got to keep going. He's, a... <laughs> but I don't want. Going. That's right. No, he well he and, right. and and people, you know, he it's not um for the fans out there. Again, I always assume that many of our fans are, you know, they're they they love John Forrest, and so they checked out the podcast, right? But the layers mm -hmm. of drag racing are are they go deep, and you know maybe we didn't get to learn a whole lot about David Rampey's uh, personality on television because he's doing winter interviews all the time. But the guy is just like a a first class uh you know competitor and person and to achieve a hundred national event wins is just awesome. All right. Final question for Rich Schaefer from NHRA Division Two Southeastern Division. Uh you referenced the Legends race. Unfinished business. NHRA has just announced, and so we can announce now the uh the fifth of the racers, uh, Big Daddy Don Garlitz, who is basically, uh, you know, a neighbor of the track an hour south, Joe Amato, Shirley Muldowney, Terry Vance, Ed McCullough is the newest announcement. Ed the ace. Hopefully there won't be any fist fights, but if there is, my money's on Ed. Um, how are you going to keep these guys from cheating? That's my question. Like, you know, what are the rules of this? You have to manage. Is this their last race of substance ever for these guys? Are they going to take it extremely seriously, guys and gals? I think that they are, Rich. I think that they're going to be inflating tires and icing manifolds and doing whatever they can possibly do. And I love the idea of it. Give me your impression of this unfinished business race. Uh, there are three racers yet to be named. I kind of have a good idea based on their silhouette, but we'll let that uh, play out. Give me your thoughts on this event. Mm -hmm. uh, for $20, I'll text you and let you know who the other three are. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, that shouldn't cost more than $20 because I'd probably lose my job. Uh, 
Uh, no, I think it, I think if there was a case where you could use the, the lines like rubbing his racing, this is a, let them go at it. Uh, you know, I, I don't care if they're, I don't care if they're trying to flatten the other guy's tires in the stage. Line. I think <laughs> this is it. I mean, this is, this is like, this is like SummerSlam. This is, you know, WrestleMania. This is like the, the knockdown drag out fight. To do, I mean, this is fun. You know, some of these guys have never raced each other in their career. And that's why it's unfinished business. They finally get to go head to head, to head against some of the people that they've never actually been on track against. So it's, it's, it's cool. You know, it, it's, to me, it's a nice mix when you look in the pits at the Gator Nationals and you're going to see, you're going to see these, these young up and comers out there racing the sportsman ranks, the TJ Tindles of the world, you know, the Scott Gibsons, people like that from division two. And you look at them and realize that someday those could be the next Ed McCullers and Terry Vances and Don Douglas. You know, and that's one of the beautiful things about our sport is that we have events like the 50th anniversary where the fans get to see all of that. They get to see the young, the old, the middle, all of it in one place. You know, you're rubbing elbows with the legends of yesterday, one more time on this track here for the Gator Nationals, so you might be rubbing elbows with the next one too, and you don't even know it yet. So to watch these guys, I mean, I, hopefully even all of our sportsmen racers are lining the fence to watch these guys go out at for unfinished business. I think it's going to be fun. I'm getting, you know, my wife used to work for WWF, so I'm going to give these guys a few tips that Natalie taught me over the years. They might want to try on each other to get the advantage. There you go. I like that. I like that. Mental, uh, physical, and otherwise. And just looking at, uh, you know, I, I find it impossible that any of these people are going to go in this uh, taking it lightly. Like, yeah, it's just, a, you know, a legend's rate. Like, I don't see any one of these people, like, taking this uh, easy. I think they're all going to bring some sort of intensity to it, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Rich, great job. Thank you so much for getting us up to speed. All you sportsman racers, Lucas Oil Series racers, fans around the country, now you know what's going to go down, how it's going to go down, how you're going to see it, how you're going to watch it. Of course, we want you at both events and would love to see you at the Amelie Motor Oil NHRA Gator Nationals. And, of course, it's not too late to get tickets, but I would do it soon. Right, Rich? They should probably do that soon. Uh, you know, ticket sales are flying off the shelf right now. So, yeah, if you uh, if you want your top Eliminator Club tickets, you better get them soon because there's not many left, ah, which yeah. is good news for me. <laughs> yes. Well, this is a premier event. I'm sure you're going to be under a lot of stress over the course of the weekend. That's why we got to you a little bit early. And, yeah, you mentioned the uh, Southeastern Division schedule begins on February 1st. Correct. Orlando Speed World, one of the tracks that we brought back into the uh, NHRA circle several years back. Also one of the tracks that I have uh, won at uh, in my bracket racing days. I'm very proud of that and um, very excited. We're getting started in February. And if you're out there in like Wyoming and you're like wondering, well, how is that possible? Because Florida, one of the positive things. Because Florida. Because Florida. Hashtag because Florida. Rich, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Good talking to you, Joe. Good talking to you, Rich. Rich Schaefer, DD, Division 2, with us here on WFO Radio. And yes, it is so true that the division directors root for their guys. And, uh, you know, they're all great people. And wherever the national event is, the division directors got a lot of responsibilities and runs the show. It's kind of a very neat and interesting system, the uh, division system that the NHRA has. And as I have now spent uh, several years, uh, part of... The team that travels around with the Mellow Yellow Series. I get to see them work. And uh, I'm a Division II guy, though. NHRA Southeastern Division. Years ago, Miami Hollywood Speedway. This past year, Daryl Gwynn inducted me into the Hall of Fame, which is still in blowing my mind. It's like, wow, that was an NHRA Division II track. And then Moroso Motorsports Park, which is now no longer with the sanction, which is just very sad to me. But I get it. I get it. Maybe someday in the future it'll be back, but who knows. But I always considered myself an NHRA Division II guy. My competition number starts with a two. And as much as, you know, I love everybody, when Jags All-Stars time comes, who am I rooting for? Well, I'm rooting for everybody to be successful, but when push comes to shove, Division II. And last year I talked a little smack, and it didn't work. But this year, maybe we'll get back going again. Thanks to Rich. Hopefully, if you are a Lucas Oil Series racer, Stock, super stock, whatever the class, you now have the information you were looking for. And even if you're not, you now know you'll be stuck to your computer watching a live stream, thanks to Warren Evans, who has helped me out a little bit, giving me some advice on WFO and some of the stuff we're going to be doing in the future. Thank you, Warren. But 
Uh, I think it is great. I think we extracted a lot of information, got to talk about Rambo, all kinds of cool stuff. Thanks to Rich for coming on the show. This is WFO Radio. 